Thank you, Acharya ji. Now we shall begin with our first panel. The first panel discussion will be on digital transformation of news, a strategic imperative. Let me now invite and introduce our esteemed session chair, Ms. Ritu Kapoor. Ms. Ritu Kapoor is the co-founder and the CEO of the Quint and a board member at Oxford University's prestigious Reuters Institute of Journalism. She is also a board member of the World Editorial Forum at the World Association of Newspapers and News Publishers. At the Quint, Ms. Kapoor is focused on scaling the innovative digital media venture, offering a combination of high-value digital journalism and storytelling. Ms. Kapoor. Hi, and thanks for having me here. Uh, after 20 plus years in broadcast, the last three years in digital founding and running a digital born uh, operation has been very exciting. And um, I think compared to a lot of our panelists today, we're still work in progress. So I'm going to jump into inviting them uh, up already so that we can get into the discussion which, which we saw uh, the beginnings of in the lounge there. Um, so I'd like to invite up uh, Mr. Varun Kohli. He's the CEO of the ITV network. Mr. Rajiv Singh, CEO, Z Media. Durga Raghunath, CEO, Indian Express Digital Media Services. Suparna Singh, CEO, NDTV Group. And uh, Salil Kumar, he's the CEO, COO, India Today Group Digital. Start off, we need uh, all of you to do a quick introduction of yourselves. Um, I'm, I'm Durga Raghunath. Uh, like Ritu said, I uh, lead the digital services for Indian Express, which includes uh, IndianExpress.com, Financial Express, Jansatta, Loksatta, Tamil, Malayalam, InYouth, which is a youth portal, um, and a couple of other sub-brands. Hi, I'm Saparna. I've been with NDTV for over 20 years. Uh, since 2009, I uh, headed NDTV Convergence, which is our digital arm. And in December, I took over as the CEO of the entire group. Um, numbers that we've just released recently, about two days ago, is that NDTV.com is now the world's 20th largest uh, news site. So those are big numbers. Thanks. Hi, my name is Salil and I uh, look after the digital business for India Today group which includes IndiaToday.com and Archtuck.in and a couple of uh, digital first uh, initiatives including some of the mobile first which is Mobile Tuck and then the Lull on Top and the iChalk and the Dailyo which is an opinion site. Hi, uh, my name is Varun Kohli, I look after the ITV network. Uh, we are spreading into now digital in a, in a big way, apart from the broadcasting business. So nice to be here and learn a lot from all the panelists. Hi, everybody. My name is Rajiv. Uh, I head the Z Media Corporation Limited, which basically is a mix of uh, both linear, like almost 14 channels, and close to about 10 odd digital properties. Uh, some of the ones that have been making a lot of noise in the marketplace znews.com, uh, india.com, healthsite.com, bollywoodlife.com and of course as an institution we are on the threshold of also launching uh, one of our OTT platforms which will shortly be announced. It's a pleasure to be here, to be part of ENBA Awards and be part of this illustrious uh, panel discussion. Hopefully we'll contribute some few new information to you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Um, so one of, the, one of the things we want to get, uh, get to understand a little better today is how have newsrooms evolved, changed culturally, uh, or in terms of workflow, or even in terms of uh, looking at how revenues are coming in. As, as, uh, and I think, other than me, I think all of us um, here are large legacy uh, media 
people who have now moved very aggressively into digital. I'd ask you first, uh, Suparna, since NTTV was really the first aggressive mover way before any of us were even saying digital, have you seen um, the newsroom, even the di digital newsroom at NDTV evolve? And how has the integration between broadcast and uh, the digital newsrooms been? Yeah, so about uh, four of yeah, about four years ago, we decided um, and we declared it publicly, which was considered quite risky at the time for a broadcast group, that we would put digital at the center of our operations. So the mandate then within the group was web first, which means that whenever there's any news coming in, the priority is to break it online and then on air follows. Um, we did this because we were aware of how people were accessing us much more through phones, through the day especially. Uh, and as far as the newsroom goes, uh, we do have an integrated newsroom, so there's a lot of synergy. But we're very clear that our online audience is very different from our broadcast audience. And I think that's been a really key part of our strategy, that NDTV.com is not NDTV247.com. So actually, the kind of headlines that we use, the priority of uh, stories, the content, the way it's written, uh, is often quite different from what our television channels will play up, but always within the same branding of, you know, NDTV cares about news, real news. Salil, what about India, India Today? Has, have, you made, uh, have you been careful to keep this distinction, or is, it, it, or is it the news flow, and it's just got various avatars on various platforms? Uh, well, we also do keep the same dis distinction, and uh, the fact is that there is a paradigm shift within the newsroom in terms of how editors are really thinking today. So, for example, if there is a news coming in, the editor is thinking multifold. And he's not only thinking multifold from, say, a web or a TV perspective, he's also looking at it from a mobile and even text to video. So the fact is, how are you going to look at it? What, are the, what is going to go in text and how is it going to go on video? For example, the TV clip and the clip that will be on the web and the clip that will go on the mobile could be different in some of the instances. So that's the kind of thinking and process that goes in when we are looking at a news that's coming in. And the, I mean, for us, digital first to TV first, we want to make sure it, it moves out really quick and it's breaking at both at the same time. I mean, there's no, nobody holding back news at any place. Yeah, I, I, can, I can tell you that after, after being into video creation for 20 years plus and broadcast, I had to completely unlearn how to create video and completely find a completely new idiom for video for digital, for instance. But in terms, you know, for, for, from print to digital, how does the text, how does the print bit move? You know, does, how, how, how different is it? Um, so I think, you know, uh, you know, there have been, I think, two sort of routes to this whole digitization with newsrooms, right? One has been uh, the more, I mean, with Indian Express uh, and perhaps similarly Times of India as well, uh, when there's a lot of reporting coming out of a newsroom and you have multiple editions, I think that is a operation in itself, right? So digital sort of got built around this operation rather than integrated into it. Um, I think the change that I'm seeing now is that one, this whole approach to enterprise journalism, right? Where you say, okay, this is the story we are investigating for the next six months. How can we start thinking digital from the get-go? So I think editorial meetings have changed uh, and editorial thinking has changed. I think also this whole notion of, um, you know, if I had, I, I currently produce 22 pages, if I had 200 pages, what would I do, right, is the way I kind of also pitch it to the larger newsroom saying, if you had so much more, what more would you do for your beats, right? So that in itself has increased the number of original, amount of original content coming out of the newsroom. And the third is, I think there are, certain parts of a newsroom that have always traditionally lent themselves more to digital than others. Um, one, for instance, is sports, right? Because sports technologically has been so advanced and so data-driven, it's served much better by digital. Number two, photography is something that I'm hugely excited about, right? Indian Express is one of the few newsrooms that still has a really large network of photographers all over India who are doing fantastic work, and they, and they probably have four color pages in the newspaper, right? So potentially, I have a newsroom 
of 70 people who are out there doing photography and video and who are so good at video journalism on their phone that I can potentially open two, three more sub-products out of that, right? So I think we're also re-examining what can emerge from news gathering, what can emerge from planning, as well as also saying, um, you know, this DNA of storytelling, like fundamentally if Indian Express is about storytelling, how is it we can create um, channel agnostic avatars of that, right? Um, so, so I think we're moving up uh, as much as we are moving broader uh, in, in the way that we're thinking about it. And what, what about, I mean, multimedia is critical to um, digital storytelling. So just uh, in, in addition to th that, do you find it easy for a senior journalist, the quality of whose journalism will be far uh, deeper and superior to, say, a, to a young journalist who's, you know, cutting his teeth or yeah. two years into the business, but in, the importance of finding ways of making, uh, consuming that same strong journalistic piece more accessible sure, sure. to a younger TG, because we know that it's a younger TG on um, mobile phones. Is that, is that easy, getting the senior yeah, journalist? Yeah, so I don't think I'm, I'm asking journalists to make that choice as much as saying that I think, um, I think speak, for me digital means communication and speaking to your audience. I think it's less about saying you have to tell the story in every possible format. So what we are doing with the newsroom is we're trying to say, listen, you have audio, you have video, you have images, you have an emailer, you choose your poison, right? Whatever you're comfortable with, please go ahead and communicate to your audience, build your following. Just if, if you're writing about education, make them, make them just get into your head and understand a little bit more, right? I think we're trying to expand knowledge for the reader uh, and, and sort of acknowledge because of vernacular as well that we have to serve the information needs of a reader or user as much as we have to serve the news needs because news consumption is an evolved behavior in itself, right? You care about your country only when your needs are taken care of. So I think that's where we're trying to build bridges and giving tools to the newsroom saying you have to do something, right? You can't just write that one copy, but you can, you know, um, at least the expertise in the uh, Express newsroom is such that if, if some of them just wrote a mailer a day, to their readership saying, hey, this is what I read during the week. I think there'll be enough people willing to subscribe and know what they've read during that week. So it's as simple, really, as that. Um, Raji, in this fairly SEO-driven universe of digital news media, where would you, uh, you know, credibility, enterprise, we know, is of high significance. I can tell you about that at the Quint, that it's, it's enterprise original content that gets the highest readership, uh, you know, telling the story that nobody else is telling. But we are all still dependent on this SEO. So in, in that context, the speed news versus enterprise uh, content to build credibility, et cetera, around your brand, you know, what's your take on that? So if we were to really look at it from a perspective of the universe, the top 10 publishers sitting across in India, purely in terms of reach, each contributing almost about 55 million odd uniques. So you're looking in terms of 500 million unique users. When you are largely driving original curated content, which is more personalized, you are looking in terms of organic search, organic growth. But in the market where we are operating, as Anurag just mentioned, it is all about Diopoli, where search is largely being driven by the two big daddies, right? Uh, search optimization and search marketing largely defines a very, very big role in terms of creating engagement with your prospective users. But it's a cash 22 situation, you know, from an enterprise value. Today, when you increase traffic proportionately or organically, are you able to then subsequently uh, leverage it and monetize it as well? Uh, we all know it that 60 to 70 percent of it gets dominated by the two big players. So there is a very big question that you might be able to optimize and show your personalized content and rank it up on the Google search and then therefore you get your relevant audience. But in order to do that, you also need to understand that you need to invest uh, in building own original curated content where it is more personalization speedy news or speed news or breaking news as we know all in linear format is no more necessarily a rational or a prerogative of a broadcast player. 
because anything and everything that is happening today is happening on second screens, on your mobile devices. And we all know that, uh, that mobile today, 80% of the content consumption is now happening on devices. Unfortunately, that's not true for uh, any other medium. But having said so, I think the onus lies on journalists today to adapt to the new form of digital content delivery platforms. And enterprises need to also start investing in it. Uh, we in Z Media have uh, largely been uh, always an organization that has uh, experimented with many first and one of the things that we have also done in the past couple of years to have built one of integrated multimedia newsrooms which comprises of close to almost about 600 people in that particular newsroom. So our, our entire forefront or foreplay is all about ensuring that you know you build relevant content, speedy news delivery through investing in technology, training people, to largely ensure that they remain contextual and relevant to the current uh, market demands. What's your take on this? Uh, moving away from can you move away from traditional aggregation and uh, to really focus on enterprise journalism? See, enterprise journalism will be the need of the art, but not immediately. It will take some time. Right now, of course, everybody is into the business of SEOs, how long we say, how might we say, everybody wants new viewers to come in. Uh, coming from an organization which is largely broadcast and now getting into digital in a big way, uh, we already have around 300 reporters in various forms across. So there is a content which is there, uh, which has not been consumed in different mediums. Uh, we have tried doing it and from a remote location in an MP or not, whatever news is coming in is getting us far more traction than the normal news which every other person says. So how different you are, how well you present yourself, how well your viewer understands you and how you are able to build a loyal reader, uh, viewer base will be the need of the hour right now. How the industry moves four years down the line, five years down the line, everybody is experimenting with something or the other because I have been talking to a lot of the digital guys since the time we have invested a lot of our stakes on digital. Uh, majority of the people still don't know from where traffic comes. While we might stick here and say that traffic comes from here, there, there is a news which at times people say will not give you traction on a television, gives us a far more traction on a digital platform and vice versa. So we are, comp we have, we are in a situation where both the mediums are complementing each other. And that is a big learning that we have had the last eight, nine months that we have invested into digital. Well, I think uh, you're obviously, um, it's like when you're looking at technology, it's technology enablement, you're looking at data. I, what's more critical for each publisher is to look at how can he actually build on a good data that helps him stay connected. And if he is actually engaging with the customer directly, then the opportunities to monetize the visit or the number of your audience is much, much easier and better. While I think today when you look at it, it's an evil which is there and we all have to live with it. Uh, you're not, you're not going to wish it away and you can make the most of it by using whatever is coming your way from the platforms. But at the same time, I think use this time, this particular period to have your own database and stay connected with the audience and build on that data so that you keep going back to them again and again and you can sell to them directly. No, don't want to wish them away. Don't think we need to. Um, you know, I think apart from uh, all the paraphernalia, what it really comes down to, uh, at least we believe, is your brand and your content. If you build good content, they will come from wherever. 
Um, and I think that sometimes because this uh, digital inflection point in India that everybody has been talking about for years has finally been breached. We're looking at the numbers now, both in terms of traffic and backstage when we were talking, at least three players said that they are profitable in digital, which I really didn't expect. So that's humongous. Um, so in that scramble now to get eyeballs and users, because finally there's some revenue coming in with digital, I think brands are in danger of an identity crisis. So this talk about you know, what we do for SEO, et cetera, if your brand stands for real news, hard news, but online to get eyeballs or SEO, you're going to do like 100 stories on what Saif Ali Khan has named his son, are you not demonstrating an identity crisis? And does an audience then not get confused about what you stand for? So what we've tried to do is just focus on what is our brand strength, build good content around that. We believe in premium news. Uh, so as an example, we have a strong presence in gadgets. You know, our Gadget Guru show is very popular. And we thought, how can we leverage that online? So we started a really, uh, what we wanted uh, to build is a really good quality site uh, on gadgets. And it's now the seventh largest in the world, by far the largest in India. So I think as a brand, you have to know what you stand for and then play to your strengths and be confident that your audience will come to you for that. So coming back to Facebook, Google, et cetera, sure, very important. We work with them. But what is the stickiness that you drive that makes people launch your app more than any other in the day? And just finally on that point, you know, it's hard to often say that one agrees with Rupert Murdoch, but I read recently that he said, um, you know, Google and Facebook should pay genuine news publishers a carriage fee. And I loved that, really. Couldn't, couldn't support that more. Um. Yeah, so I think um, adding to what Superna is saying, right? I think one, clearly knowing uh, what is the kind of content you want to invest in. And I think second is it's a myth that somehow the, if Google and Facebook were not there, we'd get all the money. Uh, the truth is we likely won't because we were huge slackers to do with technology recommendations. We invested nothing in our tech stacks. Uh, these two have managed, so, so A, they are very different. So it's stupid to combine them together. Facebook is a closed... Uh, sort of environment where users spend time uh, and, and, and consume publisher content within them. Uh, Google, on the other hand, is driving content uh, traffic to publishers. Publishers are choosing to use do DFP or not to monetize. So it's a clear choice that publishers have made. So I think Facebook is a completely different kettle of fish. And if you've chosen to invest and build brands within Facebook, I mean, that's a call that you took, right? So that's that's different. Google, on the other hand, I think has made discovery of the internet easier. So we just have to accept that whether serving ads or discovering the internet, Google is really the runway in terms of technology. And they've, they've built browsers as well, right? So I think for me, Google is a root and an ad technology. If, if we are, I think, one way able to agree as publishers and deal with agencies in the middle in a more effective way, we will probably be able to command higher CPMs and not be allowing Google to completely commoditize our inventory. I think that is one way we can work together to kind of drive up the value that we get. But other than that, to try and demonize these two as if we would have gotten all that money, I think is complete crap. I agree uh, to an extent with uh, Durga. Uh, primarily when you're looking in terms of uh, the digital enterprises, we have gone the conventional way. That's what the legacy organizations who are in the forefront of news uh, business, uh, they have seen news on the digital side purely as a conventional delivery platform to go ahead and engage with the users or viewers through an alternative route. Uh, but what has been not happening, and which is where we are all lagging behind, is to look into the data science of it. Invest in data, invest in technology. Understand what you could largely do with what the others aren't doing. I mean, purely from an analytics perspective today, it's not about just the Google or the Facebook investing in uh, uh, technology. I think it is the call of the day to understand the audience science, audience targeting. Understand that 
this business is not just about content and building content delivery platform as well as thinking about it to develop technology assets. So I think that is one area where perhaps each one of us would have to invest to get higher premiums because then you can aggregate your audiences more efficiently and present it as, a, as an option for the advertisers to consider. Unfortunately, this is not happening. Uh, the second part is that when you are looking at uh, the content curators, the journalists, the people that we have invested in and who have the onerous task of building original content to what uh, uh, Superna just mentioned, there are tools today that are available which can actually help you analyze what is trending, what is not trending, which headlines would work, what text will work and what text will not work. So therefore, when you actually profile your audience or engage with your viewers, you know in advance what is the content stickiness that viewer necessarily needs and what kind of content text headline that would work. So automatically that dependency from search goes and your your organic content delivery grows. So I think going forward, uh, we will have to coexist in the business. And the second part that we need to see from a monetization perspective, what you need to identify is a unique differentiator. What is it that you have that the others don't have? I mean, original content, fine. But you have to invest in original video platforms. Content seeding is something that you build yourself, original content. So there are many more opportunities coming our way. And I think it is where that the publishers need to stand up and see as to what alternative revenue streams can be extended to their platform. If that were to happen, then anybody and everybody would coexist. I agree, we can't demonize them. We need to coexist. And marketers, specifically publishers, in evolved markets like Australia and US and Canada have already done so. There is no reason as to why this would not happen in India as well. So, so I think um, for, uh, for me, the, the, the paywall relationship is, is really something about the brand, right? It's not about money, number one, uh, because I think oftentimes subscription revenue is compared to advertising revenue, which is apples and oranges and completely wrong. Subscription revenue needs to be compared to circulation revenue, which was never large enough to... to support any kind of media business, right? We all know that largely. We needed advertising to build our businesses. So uh, if the New York Times uh, has 3 million people subscribing, they have 300 million people reading them. It's typically 1% of your audience that subscribes to your content. It is typically 3% of your revenue that comes from there, right? So just to get a sense of scale, and I, I think the talk is way louder than any of the numbers that come out from a revenue perspective. Second, for me, uh, when I think about the Indian Express as a concept and who are the people who'd like to have a relationship with the Indian Express, with print or subscription or events, I think it, it is definitely how, what is the relationship I can have with my core audience that will define my subscription strategy. Uh, going forward or paywall strategy, it will not be about getting everybody who consumes the internet to pay. Um, I don't think NTTV is looking at uh, paywalls or any kind of freemium or subscription model for a very long time. I don't think that's who we are. And I think that's largely because um, it's a bit of a myth to say that a digital setup needs a lot of money. 
we always had a separate PNL for digital, despite being a large media legacy organization. And uh, our, our headcount now is less than 300 people. You know, and for the kind of traffic that we drive, that's a very small operation, a very tight operation. The advantage in digital is that technology allows you to do things much faster, much cheaper, much leaner than what broadcast does. So actually your investment costs are not or should not be that high. The second thing is, and thankfully, I think that this, is, this talk has fizzled out a little bit about this long tail, you know, and how you have to keep throwing content out there in the hope that something will stick. Uh, and therefore, you know, these endless efforts put into chapoing PTI, chapoing INS, actually people come to you for how you write a story, for what your original content is. And if you look, we try to compare with an NDTV to, you know, the top 40, your pop music thing. There may be 40 songs, but everybody wants to listen to the top 10. So what are your breakout standout stories in a day? Do you have 10 that everybody will come back to you for? And can you do a really good job on writing those? And if you do those, then everything else just kind of grows around that. Uh, so again, you know, we talked about video and original video. Creating short form video now, uh, which drives a lot of stickiness, is very cheap. So again, for us right now, a paywall or a subscription model really just doesn't make sense. So we also, we are not really looking at uh, a paywall structure as of now. And uh, I think the industry, even the consumers, they're not really ready right now. Uh, so if you want to be before time and try it, um, anybody can, but what kind of volumes and revenues? So you, when you think of something, uh, of adding any kind of monetization or a revenue stream to a product, I think what's important is you have to realize is the industry willing and is it ready right now? Um, looking at that scenario, I don't think so we want to do it. But having said that, I mean, there are some people where you have certain kind of categories, certain content, white papers, if somebody is doing it and it's uh, really high end, good, uh, useful content, there will be people who will be buying it. I mean, there are reports that are bought even today and there is some revenue there. So it depends on the category. For us, no, we, currently I'm not looking at it. We sell the digital magazine, by the way. Uh, the magazine, India Today magazine is sold, and there is substantial amount of revenue against which against that product. So there is an opportunity, but scale and size is small. I uh, just wanted to add to what all are saying, and uh, I'll just digress it from just being a pure digital uh, to the legacy brands which are there. Uh, the legacy brands in all that we have seen across different categories and genres Right, which is not merely digital. If the viewer has liked it, if it has built a credibility, irrespective the numbers are here or there, they have always gained traction. Uh, on the right, there are two brands which have a legacy around them. Uh, irrespective their numbers have shown or not, they've still made a lot of money. So uh, while we will debate Google, while we will debate content, what, ultimately if the viewer sees you as his mouthpiece or as something that he wants to come to you, you will make money irrespective you want to have a subscription revenue or a non-subscription revenue. Right. Media per se, when it necessarily were to say whether it is an ind independent voice or is it a mouthpiece, uh, most importantly and significantly in the current uh, consumption economy, you need to be non-biased. Otherwise, uh, your audiences are going to ditch you. Uh, significantly, 
saying so, coming in from a media house, uh, I can safely say that uh, largely in our today's uh, scenario, most of our business entities operate with a absolute free expression of interest in terms of what they want to talk about. When it comes to the digital uh, piece, uh, well, whether you like it or whether you don't like it, the content is available across everywhere in any specific form and it is not controlled. It is being controlled by social media, right? So to a great extent when it comes to digital entities, they are freewheeling, they have an opinion of their own and that is what makes them critically different from any, any other uh, platform. So I think media largely is non-biased, specifically when it comes to the digital uh, piece and that is how it would stay and I don't think it is being controlled uh, anywhere and can't be controlled here in India as well. Uh, it's obvious that there is uh, some some kind of pressure, significant pressure that the media is being asked to operate under. How much you choose to push back is really what your brand stands for. Um, you know, you have to speak uh, truth to power uh, if you believe in news uh, and in journalism. Uh, and I think in some ways right now what some kinds of mainstream media or television channels have become actually makes life much easier for people like NDTV because the disparity is so large in terms of biased and neutral that we don't have to push ourselves that much harder to, to make it clear that look, we, we speak truth. Um, it's nice to see a lot of solidarity in the media over this uh, and it's nice to see a lot of discussion and dialogue around it wherever I go. Uh, that this is something that the media and people are concerned about and that, uh, you know, we do plan to stand up for it. Uh, and yeah, I just think that, you know, your, your brand speaks for who you are. So doesn't that kind of give it away? You don't have to try too hard. See, uh, each media house stands for its own vision, its own understanding, right? Uh, coming into pressure or not, uh, I have not seen it too much, but there is a room for everybody. While I'll say I am unbiased, or you'll say you are unbiased, everybody has their own viewpoints. I think a guy would be too biased, or any publisher, will not be in business for long. It might be in a short run, they might earn a lot, but in the long run, they'll not be there. No, I, you know, uh, the fact is, you're, if, you're, if you're stating facts, um, somebody will turn around and say, listen, you're being biased. But the fact is that at least from our group perspective, we make sure that it's always being straight and uh, to the point and factual. And you maintain your standard of gold standards of journalism right through. That's what we expect from all our journalists and can I, can I we want add, them to do that. Can I just add what, see today if you become biased, the social media itself tells you in 10 seconds flat whether, no, 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 I'm saying within the, no, no. No, no, agreed. No, no, social media, it might be biased, but I'm saying there are neutral people who are watching you who, of course, give you a feedback. And that feedback is well appreciated by each and every organization. Yeah, I'm sure about to be much. Okay, so let me answer this in two ways, right? One, I think the three sort of digital newsrooms that I've managed um, Mint, First Post, and now Indian Express, I think never have I been asked by any of my bosses or promoters to, to you know, take something down, not do something. I think we've pushed the edges in all three newsrooms in different ways, so that's number one. Number two, I think unequivocally, we are, we're living in, in a very odd time, right, where anything that's thought, anything that is critical, analytical, um, which, which kind of uh, goes beyond just a sort of this, the, the India story is being thought of as unpatriotic, right? And that's, that's, I think, a very, very hard sort of society to live in and do journalism in. And I think we're all operating within that and trying to still do our jobs. Uh, I think most journalists still do their jobs. Um, and I think most people tell, still tell great stories. And I think I'll leave it at that. Just. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, here's to the power. Thanks. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we are open to taking questions now. Any questions from the audience? Uh, can you pass on the mic, please? Yeah, I love the uh, Rajiv uh, Vasudeva Kutumbakam is a is a positioning point, right? Would you call it a bias or would you not? My name is Bohidar and I worked long years turning the Times of India from a newspaper into a brand. And many people think that it's a damn bad thing to do. But if you take this branding activity into content, for instance, and even on your title or even on your network, you're actually putting extra pressure on yourself because there's already a political pressure to be pro-Indian. And then you say, Vasudeva Kutumbakam. How do you reconcile this? Um, I can tell you the Times of India story, but you tell me yours. So, why are first and foremost, uh, the word Vasudeva Kutumbakam largely denotes world as one family. And when you really define it in the broader sense of the word and not be biased with the word itself, you would perhaps acknowledge that news is all about world being one family. I mean, that's what the… the that's the, a bias, the, Rajiv. That's, th that could be a very individual opinion. Okay. But having said that, uh, it's not about being biased. It's all about being far more democratic because you feel what affects the world affects us all, you know. And that's also the tagline on which we have built our new English channel, which is the Vion, right? So within the Z Media family, I think largely we have tried to straddle the globe. And as globe is being defined as one group, the organization came up with this tagline, Vasudev Kutumbakam. Yeah. I mean, it may necessarily vary in terms of interpretation from one to another, but there are no biases attached to it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I have a question for the panel. So I run this media platform. It's a youth media platform called Jan Ki Baat, And we only do ground reporting. That's only ground zero, no studios. So I have this problem with the word uh, bias that uh, is being interpreted here. So my question here is that every individual who's grown in the society has an opinion and would have a limited bias. So why is there a problem with saying that you have a bias when you, uh, any side of the opinion? And when media says that it is neutral, I think it is uh, inherently an incorrect statement because nobody can be perfectly neutral. And if I need neutrality, I would go to an ANI, I would just see the facts. So the fact that a viewer wants opinion from the media, so why is the panel interpreting bias in a manner as it's negative? Z has an opinion, Republic has an opinion, NDTV has an opinion, everybody no, no, knows so, about that. Yeah. So, so this is a great, uh, great point, right? So every reporter, uh, every collector or every human being has its or his own lens. Now these are political lenses, sociological lenses, cultural lenses, right? That is why every newsroom has a process, right? That process ensure that there is X code from this person, there is Y code, this verification, this data, it has been double checked. Here when we say neutral or unbiased, we're talking about a process, we're not talking about people giving opinions. Yeah, my name is Chetan and I, and I work with a university. I work with a Jindal University. What I have noticed off late, the quality content, the content is somewhat missing as again, you know, I'm sorry, I'm going to come to you only at the G. Uh, you see, like we know at the evenings, there are two or three agendas. Continuously, the media house takes those agenda only to work on it. So, I mean, we know either it's a religion, either it's a military, either it's a Pakistan, you know, there are few medias. Likewise, if you talk about NDTV, other channel, India Today, so you all run as with the agendas in your mind. So, if we can get to know, you know, that this month agenda is going to be this, then accordingly, you know, the uh, people will get to know about it. So, is there some kind of mode to work on it that how these agenda get defined or what is the uh, mind behind these agenda and again, the quality of content? This is this is to this is to the panel. This is to the panel. This is to the panel. Like as I've said, India, uh, India Today also, and Z also, and NDTV too. Yeah, sure. I mean, let's you know from our perspective, there's nothing like an agenda that you've planned out. But yes, there is a newsroom. There's a meeting. Uh, the editors sit down, look at what has happened in the day, and then they've defined that this is what we are going to be talking about, or these are the facts, or this is what it is, and based on it, the programs for the day is planned out. It's like an editor's editor room, there is a meeting, a proper discussion, there is a proper process. And once that is uh, the agenda or the items have gone through it, then you come out and you say, okay, this is my day's plan. I mean, I think that uh, 
agenda is just the news and the truth. And uh, we don't sit down and plan out what topics we're going to cover in advance in a month. We look at what the day's big stories are and whether they're relevant to people and can we go beyond the obvious, which is politicians saying one thing and then fighting, slugging it out. We do a show called Reality Check every night, which looks at statements that are made, policies, schemes, and shows factually whether those statements and claims are correct or not. So our agenda is basically the news. You know, I want to ask this question, Ritu. When I acquired Business World four plus years back, I went to a wise man in the news industry that I respect a lot. His name is Raghav Bell. I asked him, can you give me advice? I want to turn business, I have a long way to do that, but into a digital. And he gave me two sets of advice. One, he said, in editorial, only hire young people and not necessarily existing editors. And he said that to me. You can, I'm sure you're in a position to cross check. And if you look at, second, he said to me, people who should lead news or the digital company should be idly less than 35 or 30. I don't know the age of most of the people, at least. You shouldn't ask women their age, but these three don't look under 35. So is there a lack of leadership in digital companies? I mean, are the wrong leaders leading? I think I'm the wrong guy to lead a digital sometimes, right? So I really want to ask these. I, because you talked of unlearning, because at the start, you said you had to unlearn. I think to become digital, we have to unlearn. That's the point I'm trying to make. Young, young, I'm saying, should younger be people be running digital companies? can't overstress the importance of experience. Um, and sure, younger people are great. It depends on what kind of organization you're talking about online. If it's BuzzFeed, perhaps a 30-something would be better at leading it. If it's something like a media legacy brand, a news uh, brand, I think you need the experience that comes with having done that. Uh, and also, technology is not impossible for older people to get. I'm not talking, I'm talking yeah. mindset. Sure, but mindset is, you know, you have great technology backing great content. We understand UI. You know, we all know how to use a phone. We all access information on the phone. So we're just playing to our strengths and talking to other people like us. Yeah? Is that fair? I'd just like to add one thing here. I um, we're actually out of time. So if we can... Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, that was very interesting. I now invite Mr.